Southern California, the land that was once great. It's still okay in some parts, but man, are people here doing their best to trash it and change it and make it not desirable. Lots of people move here every single year. They do their homework on prices and crime, and they still want to come, but they're lost, I tell you, lost. Most people don't know where to move. Like Goldilocks, they want the perfect place. Anyways, that's what this is all about. I'm going to break down every single part of Southern California and let you know exactly what to expect if you move here. It's a really big place, so no matter your background, your education, your wealth, or entertainment needs, there's somewhere for everyone. You just have to know where to look. Now, I'm no realtor, but I know a lot about this place, so I'm going to give you a tour. So let's grab some Del Taco and hop on the 10. We're going to unbox Southern California. <laughs> Look, traffic. We didn't get very far. I was all enthusiastic about kind of helping you really discover this place and then bam, we're stuck. We're not gonna be able to see Southern California easily like this, so you know what? I'm just gonna get out a map. And while we're sitting here in traffic, I'm just gonna point out all the places you need to know about. How's that? Like over here. This is as far east as Southern California extends, so anything beyond, say, Indio, and it's just farms and desert. Over here in Indio and Coachella and this part of the Coachella Valley, it's Mostly poor Mexican farm workers who bust their butts out in the fields, I'll tell you. You probably wouldn't want to live out there. If you're old and rich, you'd probably like Palm Desert or La Quinta or Rancho Mirage. If you're rich and gay, you would enjoy Palm Springs. Palm Springs, California, a modern little winter resort city that came to be known as the playground of the stars. If you're a poor crackhead druggie, you should move to Desert Hot Springs. You'd fit right in there. Over here in Cabazon's outlet shopping and that big dinosaur you saw in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Banning used to be kind of run down, but now there's a bunch of upper middle class track homes for folks who kind of want to get as far away as possible from the valley and still be somewhat close by. It's not a bad place, but you'd be isolated from everyone. Actually, that kind of sounds nice, doesn't it? Oakland's a tiny little quiet place where they grow apples. You could live there and be totally happy if you didn't need much to do for fun. Yukaipa is a mix between rednecks and kind of successful families who, for some reason, don't have to commute very far. I mean, there's some really nice homes up there, but I don't know where these people work. LA is way too far away for them to drive to every day. Mentone's rednecks and poor white people who raise chickens. Redlands is undoubtedly the nicest part of this whole valley. If you can afford it, you should definitely consider Redlands. A lot of people here are upper middle class, but there's some really big expensive homes on the hillside. And this is where everybody in the Eastern Valley goes to dinner or to get away from the rest of the IE BS. Highland, hey, my hometown. This used to be a nice place, but the west side looks like San Bernardino now. The eastern half is where all the half million dollar track homes are. There's an Indian casino here where everybody from Southern California goes. Seriously, traffic in and out of here on Fridays is nuts. San Bernardino. In the 50s and 60s, this place was rad, but then crack and AIDS moved in in the 80s, and now everybody except the North End is run down and literally trashed. If you honestly wanted to move to San Bernardino, pick anywhere north of 40th Street. Muscoy is a bunch of Hispanics and chickens. It looks like Mexico. <laughs> now, this whole part of what some call the high desert includes places like Apple Valley, Victor Valley, Hesperia, and Barstow. It's going to be mostly middle class people with dirt front yards. It's actually becoming more popular for people who kind of want to get away from the mess down in the valley, and I can't blame them. There isn't much to do up here in the high desert for fun, but you can make your own fun, right? And you'd meet a lot of people who will pull over to pee on their way to Vegas. The high desert actually extends all the way back down around towards desert hot springs again. Lots of horse country out this way and lots of dirt, lots of peace and quiet. I highly recommend it. And anything north of that isn't really Southern California. What about mountains? If you want to dig in the desert and want to live in the mountains, this whole area here is your best bet in all of Southern California. These are the San Bernardino Mountains. Big Bear's a nice place. Lots of old, cranky, rednecky people who voted for Trump. Good folks. Running Springs is kind of a tinier version of Big Bear. You can get a cabin back there and watch the bears and deer walk around. If you're rich and snobby, you could move to Lake Arrowhead. Seriously, Lake Arrowhead people think they are so cool. Every time it snows, they write about it on Facebook. Nobody cares, Lake Arrowhead people. Crestlines, more hippies and rednecks. Small cabins in the woods, I tell you. Some people even have power there, if you can believe it. 
Okay, so traffic is not picking up. Sorry, I should have warned you. It's like that all the time here. People either drive too fast because they're nuts or too slow because they're stoned. Anyways, let's get back to the map. Okay, so we left off over here in the East Valley, or the IE, if you want to stay with the lingo. This whole region here, including Colton, Rialto, and Bloomington, is like 90% run down with small pockets of middle class. It's really cheap for Southern California standards, but with that comes, well, run down areas and crime. Most of Fontana's like that too, but there's a whole new north end that's all half million dollar track homes. It's new, which makes it nice, but the wind blows hard here every freaking day. There's pretty views though. Rancho Cucamonga, or Rancho, it's a bunch of upper middle class white people who live against a hillside. Good place, really safe. Upland, sort of the same, but less nice homes. There's actually really nice neighborhoods up there though. Ontario is basically a bunch of strip malls and an airport. You'd hate it. I don't know how anyone deals. The traffic on the side roads is just the worst. Claremont, the snobs of the East Valley. There's a bunch of colleges here. It's really safe and really cute, but really expensive. It's a bunch of triggered liberals who blame the school when their kid gets a B. I lived there once. Pomona's mostly Mexicans and crime. Down here is Chino. It's a mix of track homes and chicken farms. Norco's pretty much the same thing, but with horses. If you're into raising farm animals and want that rundown country feel, this is a good area for you. No? No smelly neighborhoods? Okay, let's move on. Back this way a bit to Riverside. Now, Riverside's actually kind of a cool place. It's way better than San Bernardino. It's really diverse, and there's huge pockets that go from rundown to really nice, depending on what part of town you're in. There's tons of gay Hispanics here, so if you're a gay Hispanic, you'd fit right in, in Riverside. Now, do you drive a big old pickup in Blair Country Music? Because this whole part of Riverside County here, places like Hemet, San Jacinto, and Paris, all the way to the San Jacinto Mountains is Redneck Kingdom. It's also old people, depending on what part of town you're on and in what trailer park you're currently in. But not Temecula. This is super posh. Like if you have a lot of money and you want to live the high life, this is a great option. You're halfway to LA or San Diego. It's all nice, fancy homes and old Spanish looking downtowns and wineries. It's actually the wealthiest part of this whole side of the state and probably the only part of the state that somebody could actually justify a second home. Then we cross into LA County. Did you know LA has the fifth worst traffic in the country? Only fifth, Mappy? That seems low. I can't imagine it getting much worse. Hey, we're about to talk about LA County. If you were gonna live in LA County, Mappy, where would you tell people to move? Well, since I'm Jewish, I'd say the Fairfax area. <laughs> You're Jewish? I didn't know that. Duh. You don't wear that hat thing. It's called a yarmulke and f for insulting me. <laughs> God, jeez, Mappy, didn't mean to upset you. Sorry. Anyways, this whole part here, which includes Covina, West Covina, and El Monte, is mostly hardworking, lower, middle-class Hispanic families who keep their heads down and don't cause trouble. If we go further south, we get into Orange County, so we'll come back to that later. Okay, so this whole part of the LA Basin in eastern LA County is pretty easy. Anything close to the San Gabriel Mountains is way nicer and safer, but more expensive than the areas on the other side of the valley, along the 60. Except Hacienda Heights, that's really nice. Pasadena is super nice, but it's filled with snobs. If you have a lot of money and like shady streets and cool bars and restaurants, you can move there. This is also where all the middle class Hispanics in the valley go for fun on Friday night. Glendale is a wealthier and much wider version of Pasadena. Burbank is less rich than Glendale. Both are pretty snobby to everybody else in the county, but nice to each other, so there's that. Down here near LA and El Monte and Montebello and East LA is 95% Hispanic. They've cleaned the place up since this place was trashed in the 90s, but it's not somewhere you'd likely want to be unless you wanted a real fixer-upper and loved mariachi music. Down here is Orange County, so again, we'll come back to that later. This whole area here is mostly nice parts that haven't been trashed yet. Lots of suburbs, good schools, long commutes. You'd probably have somebody from San Fernando mowing your yard. And way up here in the San Fernando Valley is mostly white people and nice track homes. You could lead a very nice upper middle class lifestyle up here away from everybody else, but you'd have to worry about forest fires every year. But the houses are made of stucco and tile. They can't burn, right? Northridge is also upper middle class. Everything here is much more rundown. It's mostly inexpensive three bedroom homes and a bunch of cheap apartment buildings and dollar stores. Then you have North Hollywood, which is made of middle class people who desperately want to be upper class. They call it NoHo, or at least I do. You wouldn't want to live there unless you're like under 40. Further west, we come to places like Simi Valley and Moore Park, Thousand Oaks, Calabasas. It's all pretty much 
wealthy white closet Republicans. It's actually pretty much like that until you get to Ojai, which is a bunch of hippies. It's way out in the middle of nowhere and really pretty. If you didn't have to commute and you have the cash, I highly recommend Ojai. And then you have Santa Barbara, which is also a really good place. This is kind of the border of what constitutes Southern California. Anything north is Central California. Santa Barbara is kind of all over the place. There's a lot of hippies, a bunch of college kids, a bunch of old people and retirees. Everyone who surfs here, surfs here just to say they surf here. The homes along the hillsides are really amazing, but really expensive. Outside of Temecula or San Diego, this is probably the best place you can live in Southern California, people. I love surfer guys. Karen Mappy, I think you'd probably be more West LA. You're fake and rude and shallow and selfish. I'm not rude. <laughs> okay. Anyways, we're going to get to LA in a minute, Karen. Hang tight. Okay, so now we're going to go back south again to Ventura and Oxnard, which are really nice places to live. It's a lot more wealthy closet Republicans. Malibu is super rich liberals who can't wait to tell people they live in Malibu. If you're not wealthy, you would hate Malibu unless you're like 25. Now we come to the LA Basin, which is a whole beast onto itself. Downtown LA is a dump filled with homeless and trash. You definitely don't want a condo downtown. Don't even think about it ever, ever, ever will you live in downtown LA. Say it with me. They fixed up some parts of the south side of downtown by the Staples Center, but they're struggling to keep that nice. That'll be trash one day too. Now this whole part from Inglewood to Compton to Watts to South Central used to be inner city black gangster hell. Now it's really all Hispanics that moved in when the blacks moved out in the late 90s. It's much less dangerous and they've cleaned the place up. This is certainly not the same place Easy e and Ice Cube once knew. I like South LA. I know you do, Juan. Your people have a lot of pride in their neighborhoods and they mostly stay out of trouble. Great. Echo Park and Silver Lake is where all the poor hipsters live. If you're under 30 and broke and want to hang out with other broke young people, that's a good spot for you. East Hollywood is where all the actor wannabes live. Is breaking into Hollywood still a thing? Where do they make Netflix movies? That's where you should move if you want to be an actor. Hollywood's a dump with lots of touristy stuff. Hollywood is not dumpy. I pull people over there all the time and they're really sweet. <laughs> okay. West Hollywood is where all the gays and young people live who don't have money but pretend to have money and struggle to pay their rent. This part of Mid Wilshire is actually nice, but it's filled with pretentious, not quite West LA types who drive their nice cars to lunch. You probably couldn't afford to live there. Beverly Hills is Beverly Hills. Big homes and fancy shopping. That's where I want to be. <laughs> okay, this whole West area is West LA, Karen. It's really just snobby white people. Some have a ton of money and some pretend to. You'll see a lot of millennial kids driving around using their parents' credit cards. Some of them have jobs. Those $250 shoes they're wearing took a whole day of bartending to afford. Westwood is more of that. UCLA's here. There's wealthy Asian kids everywhere. Brentwood is also very fancy and snobby. This is where OJ killed Nicole. Lots of gates at the end of driveways. You couldn't afford it. Pacific Palisades is probably the wealthiest part of Los Angeles. Celebrities live here. Everybody grows big hedges so you can't see their homes. Super snobby of them. Santa Monica is more young snobs, if you can believe it. There's a lot of restaurants and bars and a pier with a homeless camp on it. Venice is poor white people, hipsters, hippies, and bums. Manhattan Beach and Redondo Beach are the opposite of that, though. This is super wealthy, out-of-touch white people whose kids spend too much money on clothes. Marina Del Rey and Playa Del Rey are people that have even more money than that. It's a bunch of white people who actually mind their own business. They're snobs, but they're not in your face about it, snobs. LAX is the worst airport in the country, surrounded by a ghetto on three sides. Welcome to LA. Enjoy your stay. Rancho Palos Verdes is retired, wealthy white people who wake up at 6 in the morning and work out in their home gyms. You can't afford this view. San Pedro is much less wealthy white people who hate Long Beach. Long Beach might as well be a war zone. You definitely don't want to live here. Don't even think about it one more time, mister. Torrance and Carson are also run down. You don't want to be there either. Everything else in South LA near the Orange County border is pretty run down until we get to Orange County. Now a good rule of thumb is anything in North Orange County Places like Fullerton, Anaheim, Garden Grove, Orange, and Santa Ana are far less wealthy and nice than Orange County beach communities or places along the hillsides. So in Orange County, the further south, west, or east, and it's much nicer. Most of the crime in rundown areas in Orange County are north of the 22, except this little pocket here. That's all wealthy Asians for some reason. Seal Beach is super quiet and rich. A great place, actually. Huntington Beach is just about all rich white people. Newport Beach is even richer, wealthy white people. Corona Del Mar is like the richest white people on the coast. 
Irvine's super nice and filled with wealthy people. It's been called one of the safest places in the country. If you can afford to live here, it's probably your best bet in Orange County, since the people are down to earth and you're close to the beach too. All of this, this whole eastern hillside of Orange County, those are all the track homes that were once exclusive but are exclusive no longer. It's really safe here. There's a lot of great people, lots of 50 and 60-ish conservatives who go to church a lot, but they have to worry about fires every summer. Cota de Casa and south of that's the richest part of eastern Orange County hillsides. You can't afford that. Laguna Beach, Lisa Niguel, San Juan Capistrano, Dana Point, and San Clemente are all filled with even more wealthy white people who voted for Trump, but they don't tell their friends in LA they voted for Trump. You can't afford this either. Okay, so traffic's picking up a little bit, isn't it? Yeah. Now, have you decided the perfect place for you yet? You look worried. This isn't what you expected, is it? Okay, don't fret. You'll eventually acquiesce. Everybody else does. You just learn to lower your standards, that's all. And we still have San Diego County. Okay, so we leave Orange County and we go south. There's really nothing here except for a military base. But here in northern San Diego County, it's all newish track home communities that are way overpriced because it's all brand new and there's hardly any crime. But block after block, it's teeny little houses like this for $600,000. I know, crazy. You have no yard. Teeny home, three bedrooms. It's really not all that. Oceanside and Carlsbad are right on the coast. They're super cool places to live too. They're quiet and safe. You should move there. If you do move here, your teenager is going to begin skateboarding and eating burritos. This whole stretch along the coast is all really super wealthy white people all the way down to La Jolla. It's old money exclusive. You can't afford it. Everything inland here are the people who never made enough money to live along those coastal hillsides, but who have successful careers nonetheless. Cool neighborhoods and communities. I'd highly recommend you check them out. Here's Pacific Beach, overpriced homes, burritos, and dog-friendly beaches. A lot of young people. And this is Coronado. Rich retirees and show-offs. You can't afford this either. Here we are in San Diego, perhaps the nicest city in the country. Seriously, low crime, it's clean. There's little homeless so far, and there's tons to do. A world-class city indeed. San Diego is 10 out of 10. Make it happen. You'll love it. And south of that gets less wealthy and more run down very fast. National City and Chula Vista are where more regular working folks live. There's a lot more Hispanics here too. It's like 60%. That's because we're only 20 miles away from TJ. The end of the road. We did it. We just toured all of Southern California and it only took two days in traffic. Like I warned you, it's expensive for a decent place and terrible in the affordable ones. But you have nice weather and great food and lots of things to do and stuff to experience. So it's a trade-off. But for now, since we came all the way here, we should probably cross over and get some tacos. Just leave your purse in the trunk. You won't need it. California's so big and cool. There's a lot of beaches where you can cool off. The water's so cold here. People want to move here cause they think that it's so great here. But it's crowded here. Yes, it's crowded here. Here, here, here. It's crowded here. If you want to live the California dream, then they need more nice. Yes, they need more nice. California's hot and the people here are hot, except the ones that are not hot. They're the ones that are not hot. You can be a movie star or you can see a movie star, but they won't talk to you. Cause they're not into you. Sit in traffic, pay a lot for your house, enjoy the warm weather, try not to get crushed. Oh, California. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great! you should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.